Hey guys, and welcome back to In the Kitchen with me, Mikey. And of course, our cameraman. Say hi, Roy. Hi, Roy. Of course, we're getting started with a little bit of a drink. Keeping it simple today, another margarita. Yay. But what we, what we have on the menu for, your, for you tonight, we have seared tuna with sesame. We are going to do this Asian style. I'll show you how, how to make a uh, soy sauce dip for it. Um, same ones you get at Chinese restaurants, uh, usually for their little dumplings or pot stickers as they call them. Show you how to make that. We are going to do creamed spinach. Do not turn up your nose to creamed spinach. For the most part, if you don't like spinach, it's because you've had it so overcooked, it was like... Slime. It's not. Slime. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to show you how to, a way to do that where the spinach still takes texture really really good and it's got cheese in it how can you go wrong with cheese cheese garlic this is all going to come together and for the uh, side dish tonight we're doing twice baked potatoes and i'm going to show you an easy cheat on those when we come back on in the kitchen with my hey guys welcome back it's almost done I've been experimenting with margaritas lately, but tonight we're just going to take the old easy way. Green margaritas. You know we got to sip on something while we're doing this. And this looks like they are going to be perfect. Each time we make these, we use a little bit more tequila in them. Yeah. We got kind of wobbly last week. Yeah, we did. Both of us. Cheers to you. Let's get started. What you're going to need for your cream spinach, which is what we're starting on. It will take the longest. Mm, that's tasty. And you though, I forgot the salt. See, I always forget That's that. okay. In a small, small pot, medium sized pot, depending on how many you're cooking for tonight, we're just doing two. You wanna start off with about a tablespoon and a half of flour, maybe a little bit more. To that, you want to add just a pinch of salt. You don't want to add too much onto this. We're going to salt it again in a little bit. Here we go. See, we went through this last week and they even scrubbed this thing. Ah, ah, there we go. We have fire. We have ignition. Okay, you want... This week I'm going to use a little bit of oil. Uh, about a tablespoon and a half, two tablespoons. You want to whisk both of these together, making a roux. You do not want to put a whole lot of color on this, but you do want to cook the flour. Raw flour tastes really, really raw. Doughy. Okay. I'm gonna give this about 30, 35 seconds. Maybe add just a smidge more oil to loosen that up. There you go. Now to this, we are going to add about a quarter of a cup of green onion. We are going to add about a half a cup of regular Vidalia onion. Use any kind that you like. It's just personal for me. I like Vidalia because, well, I can sit down and eat an onion by myself. And... <laughs> You want about a tablespoon of fresh garlic. If you're using garlic powder, um, you want to cut that down to about a half a teaspoon. Um, your garlic powder is going to be a lot, lot stronger. Here in just a minute, you're going to see that uh, your onions are going to release a little bit of moisture. That's going to cause your uh, roux to just automatically seize up. That's fine. We're going to loosen it up with milk. I have about a cup and a half of milk. It is going to seem like it's a lot, but there's another ingredient that is going to take up some of this um, milk, and it'll be a little bit thicker. OK, 
getting that ingredient ready now so I wouldn't forget. You want to bring this up to a boil relatively slowly because it does have milk in it and you don't want it to break. Right before you are at a full boil, I'm sorry, a, a gentle boil, just when you start seeing bubbles around the edges, start dropping in your spinach. You are probably going to have to do this in um, stages. Uh, and please, please, please use fresh spinach. If you may use it out of the can, I'm telling you, you're not going to like it. This is about a half a pound. It, um, it is pre-packaged. There's not much fresh spinach on just yet here, uh, here in Charleston, which is kind of surprising. But I don't think that's something a lot of people around here grow. You can see it already starting to thicken up. Now, your spinach is going to release a lot of water. So you want to try to do this uh, in about 10 minutes because you don't want the first spinach that you put in to get over, overly done. I think that's the biggest reason people really don't like spinach is because it's so overcooked and it does take on that slimy texture. Um, somewhat like okra, but I think okra is just slimy no matter what you do. I like it fried. I do like okra. I've got to admit. <coughs> so. I like Oprah too. <laughs> hey Oprah, if you're watching. Yay, hey. Hey girl. We're low calorie, but not calorie free. Yeah. Low carbs for me. Okay, we're just going to turn this down and turn this every few minutes. When it starts cooking down in about five minutes, we'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. It was a quick five minutes. As you can see, the spinach cooked down completely, but it is not too mushy. You don't want to overcook your spinach. Nobody's going to like it. That's why kids don't. Your final ingredient will be about a half a cup of Parmesan. Now I cut down on it because I just got to watch my salt. That's the only reason. You can also throw this in a shallow glass uh, pie plate or a pie pan, either one, and cover it with your favorite, maybe a mozzarella. A little less healthy, but very, very good. So, we are going to move right along now to getting our tuna ready. Again, we're with the um, iron skillet, if you have one. You can do this in a skillet, a flat skillet. Um, you can even do this in a, um, like an electric skillet, if you have one. The trick to your iron skillet and to your fish not sticking is get your pan smoking, smoking hot. I've got mine up on about high, but this is a torch burner, so it is going to hit a lot faster than yours. We are going to start the sauce that will be going over the fish or using it as a dipping sauce, either one. In my ramekin, I have one tablespoon of just plain white sugar. To that, I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half of vinegar. Just plain white vinegar. Right at two tablespoons, two to four tablespoons of soy sauce. This is why I say cut down on the salt on some things that you make. Because when, you, when using salt in any ingredient, um, X ingredient has salt, this ingredient has salt, that ingredient has salt. When you combine those over to, uh, all together, you get overly salty food. Um, and sometimes don't even realize it. And then, oh, maybe I need to add a little bit more. Yeah, you don't want to. So, enough with the lecture. Soy sauce, you want about one inch of ginger. Really, you do need fresh ginger for this one. And I'm gonna go behind Roy. <laughs> Trade places. Get a pinch of garlic to go in here. Mm, smells good. The best way to mix Asian sauces, chopsticks. Yes. <clears throat> I'm no good with those. <laughs> I like the Korean chopsticks. They're a little bit more squared off. These are actually <clears throat> Japanese, a wooden set. I would start a former ball scot for me. Now, in there, it is not a requisite, but it sure makes it taste good to, throw, to drop all your spices on the counter first. 
Um, I don't know why I always pick the smallest uh, cabinet for my spices when I have every spice known to man, I do believe. Uh, just ask Roy about you that. You got a lot. <laughs> you have a He's room full of, a few. You have, you have a room full of spices. I put just a dusting of red peppers on top. And the green part of your shallots, long onions, whatever you want to call them, set it on top. You want that to sit for a good, oh, 25, 30 minutes while you're writing your um, tuna. While we're getting our pan heated up, which it's getting pretty close, you're going to sprinkle just a small amount of sea salt on tuna. How fitting is that, right? If it comes from the sea, feed it with the sea. You're going to let that sit for just a few minutes. And no, it's not going to be one-sided food. I'm going to let that sit for just a few moments to draw out some of the moisture that works. Now, as I told you, I'm going to keep dropping spices. Our twice-baked potatoes. Very simple. We have two baked potatoes, whatever size you like. I place two holes in them with a knife. Throw them in my microwave. I typically start off with about six minutes to get them ready as I hit five <laughs> to get those ready. Um, by the time those are done, I can show you how to throw the fish together and finish your twice baked potatoes. We'll be right back. Hey guys, and welcome back. Our potatoes are finished. And what I was talking about earlier with letting your tuna sweat, you can do this with all of your fish and even most of your vegetables. If you plan, plan on doing a sear on them where you want color, a little bit of crispness, if not, all that water is going to stay in your pan and it's going to get really, really soggy. So to cover, we have our spinach. It's completely ready. Yes, now it's getting a little bit softer, but that's the perils of doing a live show. It does take the longest to cook, although we had a little fight with the potatoes. So, after a total of 10 minutes in the potato, and these are new potatoes this year, so they're going to be a lot softer, or at least the outsides are. Uh, you may get a little bit of your uh, shell or skins in with them. That's fine. Try to get out as much of your potatoes as you can. Scoop it into your bowl. For time, I'm just going to do one on here real quick. A little bit of cubed processed cheese blocks. They come in a container about this big. You know what they are. They come in a variety of tastes. Now, potatoes do always need salt. Keep in mind that cheese has a lot of salt in it, so you don't want to put too much. We're going to keep it relatively simple with this and just do a... Uh, cheese, uh, cheese and potato mix <laughs> right before we put them in the oven for their second bake, which actually I'm going to show you guys in my air fryer. That and because it's 991 degrees in my kitchen today. Oh, it's warm. It's 90 degrees outside. Yes, I do have an air conditioner, but for some reason it doesn't touch my kitchen. So, once you have these ready, I guess I'll go ahead and do the second one. Come on, we have nothing else to do. Except for being here with you guys. What's your favorite potato recipe? Let me know. Comment below. And while you're commenting, you know, here comes that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would, as my channel grows, we both would really like to know where you guys are from. Yeah, let us know where you're from. We come from West Virginia. We're in Charleston, West Virginia. Uh, I know I have seen a couple of people on there uh, from Germany. I would love to hear from you guys. Tell me about your favorite recipes, some of your homey recipes. We don't always do um, uh, home-cooked meals or southern. I'm sorry, we always do home-cooked. We don't always do um, meals that are most common in the United States. I lean towards a lot of Korean. Yes, he does. Roy leans to Indian. Yes. He, he does like Indian food and his curries. Okay, once this is mixed up, you want, of course, black pepper. You have to have black pepper with your potato. Hey, a little bit of melted butter. We go through this every week. He's a ghee man. I use ghee. 
and ghee is a lot stronger. It's like super butter, concentrated butter, which it is. It's just all the moisture re removed out of it. Once you get everything mixed back in, you get a, well, my small baking pan is actually currently being used for the fish. Oh, there's my Ghirardelli chocolate for a later recipe, Roy. We found it. Oh, yay. So we're going to get our potatoes. I'll show you these very, very quickly. Yeah, that's where I stuck it. Don't ask. I'm not. Restuff it. Restuff it. <laughs> okay, um, just stuff it. Don't restuff it. Back in. I like to put a little bit of fresh onion on mine. Pop these in a preheated oven, 350, only for about 10 to 15 minutes. Back to your tuna. Flip it onto a drier spot. Try to do that and cheat a little bit. A little bit more salt. And yes, you are going to start this with the first side down and it will continue to release. I've had my pan staying on getting hot. We're gonna raise the temperature up to smoking, and then we'll be right back. Hey guys, and we're back. Our fish has set for about five minutes. When you lay it in your pan, yeah, move it slightly. That will help to keep it from sticking. You want to cook about a minute and a half on each side for rare, which is traditional. If you're like me, I'm not a huge, huge fan of sushi. So I will probably let mine go a little bit further, but I will show you how it should be. Once you get started, and if you're worried about the one, uh, one side of seasoning, remember I already seasoned uh, the first side with salt. This side is sitting with salt and pepper. We're gonna let it cook until the white on your tuna comes up about quarter weight, which we're honestly almost there. The higher the heat, the less it will stick. You do have to watch it. Tuna is a low moisture, high flaking fish. The longer you cook it, the more it's gonna fall apart. That is oh, a perfect good. sear. This, uh, the salt also works with your chicken. If you wonder why you throw a chicken breast in and you can't get it uh, crisp at all, that's why. Uh, it's just too wet. You know, you can also use a dish towel on it. Please make sure it's a clean one. And if you're doing it with chicken or any raw meat, make sure you don't use it for anything else and put it immediately in your wash. That is your Asian seared tuna. As you can see, it is going to push out some of the juices. Uh, blood, if you want to say, but it's not really blood. Protein. Protein, yes. You have your creamed spinach, which is going to be delicious with tuna. And we have our dipping sauce, and of course our twice-baked potatoes, which should be coming out any second. Let's have a quick look down my... <laughs> armpit. All right, right. your armpit. Now hiring new cameraman. <laughs> there. Not much of a difference because I didn't put any extra cheese on top, but trust me, they're hot as a cat's back. Thank you guys for joining us both this weekend, this week, and we can't wait to see you next Friday. Thank you guys and have a great night. I know I said Friday. We tape on Fridays, upload on Saturdays usually. Again, since you're here, you're still watching, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We need you. We like you. And yes. we would love to hear where everybody is from. Yes, please, down there. So from the Mountain State, West by God, Virginia, Woo! you guys have a wonderful evening.